Hi, everybody. Welcome. Hello, everyone. I am Katia Carranza, and I am a program coordinator with Together for Nature. And I have here my collaborator on this presentation. Hello, everyone. My name is Gianna. I'm with Together for Nature, and I was a mentee for Together for Nature. Yes, and now she's a volunteer with us, a lead volunteer. So thank you everyone for being here. I'm going to share my screen and we are super excited to have you here with us today. Um, we have been waiting to do this presentation for several months now. Um, how long have we been working on this? I think we have been working on it for maybe four to around five to four or three months now. Yeah. Oh, that's exciting. <laughs> yeah. Um, Jana mentioned how she was a volunteer with us or a mentee, and uh, this was her uh, project. So I am checking Facebook. So please interact with us if you have questions, comments. There will be a little bit of an interactive, um, a few interactive questions. So obviously you're not here in our Zoom, but you can uh, respond to us and we can, um, we can answer you. So, um, wait, I am just checking that everything's working. Perfect. Mm. Okay, we're good to start. So like was mentioned in the description today, we're going to talk about climate change, what it is, why it's important to address and why we should take action for sustainability and why improving our social and environmental connections and interconnections is essential to that. A failure to live sustainably um, has led us to the global dilemma of climate change and countless environmental issues that are global. We, many of us have lived in societies that do not employ holistic perspectives Many of them have had a narrow focus on their definition of progress, which is often tied to profit. And in order to pursue economic benefits, the connections with social and environmental impacts have often been ignored. And it has been the same, this same drive that is degrading our social and environmental conditions worldwide. That's what's just like, wild to think about. In the past 60 years, 60% 60 of the Earth's ecosystems have been degraded. And to date, we have extracted around 23 billion tons of resources from the Earth. And 85% of the world right now live on less than $30 per day. And every 10th person in the world lives on less than $2 per day. So the same drive for profit has caused these negative social and environmental conditions that are replicated throughout the world. It is apparent that we must change what we're doing as a society and that we need to take action for sustainability as soon as we can, um, especially because climate change is placing a time, a time limit on our actions. So I've mentioned sustainability, climate change. These are words that are in the news um, often, but oftentimes people don't really know what they mean. So we're going to give you a uh, quick presentation on that. 
Um, climate change. It is the greatest sustainability challenge of our time. What is climate change? Climate change refers to changes in global and regional climate patterns caused by an increase in global warming attributed to greenhouse gas emissions caused by the use of fossil fuels in supply production, and it includes rising sea levels, melting glaciers, and unusual changes in our weather, like an increase of rainfall or temperature, including changes in plant blooming times. As seen in this image in the screen of our Earth, we can see that the heat from the sun is captured by Earth in order to keep our planet warm and habitable. Uh, however, some of this heat is released back to space or kept naturally by our planet, yet some gases aren't kept naturally. These gases are called greenhouse gases, which are pollutants released um, from human activities such as fossil fuels. These greenhouse gases are trapping more sun's heat in our atmosphere and are increasing the temperatures on Earth, which aren't natural. Thus, these gases then lead to global warming, which is the rise of Earth's temperatures and cause climate change. Therefore, unusual weather patterns and rising temperatures of our planet are originating from, these green, from this greenhouse effect and these greenhouse gases that we're releasing. And next, we'll just go over the impacts of this. Yeah, and so human activity has already warmed the planet 1.1 Celsius degrees above pre-industrial levels, um, like Gianna was mentioning. Climate change is caused by human activity and our fossil fuel use. And the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change has warned that moving above a um, change in two degrees Celsius could have catastrophic consequences. So the goal right now is 1.5, at, at most 1.5 degrees Celsius change in the, in the global temperature. But right now the world is on track to surpass 1.5 and two degree change. And the, the most optimistic scenario is that if all 140 countries that announced net zero targets um, actually reach them, their most ambitious commitments under the Paris Agreement, we're still going to be at 1.8 Celsius by 20, 2100, what is it, the 21st, 22nd century. So this is a very urgent dilemma that we must take action now today. We can't wait because we are already on track to surpass it, even if we meet our most ambitious goals. And so climate change, I, I like this image because it shows you what's going to happen throughout the world. It's not just what's going to happen in one region, but it's throughout the world. So as you can see here, that um, the snow caps are melting, the sea level projected to rise, we're gonna have warmer oceans, more extreme weather events that are stronger, which includes heat waves, tornadoes, and all of this is going to affect our wildlife, right? It's going to change their life cycles and some won't be able to survive because their environments change so much. And people are technically biota as well, right? So it's also going to be impacting us at a global level. We're going to have floods, droughts, and weather patterns make it more difficult to grow crops. We're gonna have damage to infrastructure. Prices of everything are going to keep rising because it's going to be harder to grow and harder to work. So we need to take action now in order to improve our social and environmental impacts. At the state and local level, climate change is already having an impact and we're going to talk a little about that. So in the, sh in the line chart that we see here, we can see like Gathia mentioned before about the climate impacts that we have, we are seeing a climate impact in Illinois, which in this line chart, you can view that throughout time, uh, the temperature of Illinois has been increasing. This is, of course, largely due to the increase of human activities that have been increasing the amount of greenhouse gases, as mentioned before, uh, in our Earth's atmosphere, 
we can refer this data to like the start of the industrial revolution that began like the mid 1817s 17th century, which 1700, sorry, which led to an increase of more industrial and more greenhouse gases being used. So as we can see here, we have that in like the 1900s, the temperature is decreasing and then we can see increasing through our current times, which we can see that this is not natural for Illinois. And this is something that's occurring because of global warming and climate change. Yeah, in Illinois, the average daily temperature has increased throughout most of the state the last 100 years by one to two degrees. And winter warming was especially notable. And this, this is another impact that we can see occurring in Illinois, which is the increase of participation, which is rainfall uh, changes Changes have also increased in Illinois of participation uh, due as global warming leads to temperature change. Our planet's climate changes, our, pla our planet's climate is changing as well. So because of this, we are getting more rainfall because of changes in our climate, which as we can see in this data, Illinois is seeing an increase of weather patterns like an increase of rain that isn't meant to occur naturally in our state. And Meanwhile, the average annual participation has increased by 5% to as much as 20% in parts of the state, and there are 40% more days with two inches of rain or more, which is not natural in our state. Climate change is here. Yes. It's in Illinois now. So, like we've mentioned, we're going to have rising temperatures, flooding, unusual precipitation, increase in weather, and all of these changes coming from climate change, made worse by climate change, are also going to impact our communities. And children who were 10 or younger, it's expected that um, children who were 10 or younger in 2020, they could experience a nearly fourfold increase in extreme events by the end of the century. If we, if we reach 1.5 Celsius, which we're set to that to pass. And here, I like this graph because it also shows how climate change is going to impact our communities in Lake County and throughout the world. Um, but climate change with the, the change in local weather is going to impact air quality. It can impact allergies, asthma, it can increase local parasites, local viruses, like we're seeing an increase in malaria in Illinois. Um, mental health impacts could result from the environmental stress, from the social stress, and also um, heat-related illnesses that are due to uh, the extreme heat. Um, and then flooding could also cause um, cause uh, respiratory issues because of mold and whatnot. And we're already seeing forced migration that's already happening within the states due to the wildfires and also in other countries because droughts are not letting people grow. And something very important to know is the impacts of climate change are not equally born and will not be equally born. The global south is going to face much of the effects when um, it's been noted that most that Western countries are more responsible for climate change. So sustainability solutions are being advanced worldwide in order to address the global problem of climate change. But before we go into that, we wanna reflect a little on, on where we live, on how climate change is impacting our communities, not just in Illinois, but in our specific region and if it's already happening. So um, Gianna, what, what, have you seen anything in Chicago? Um, I have seen, of course, that we have weird temperature changes. There has been an increase of hotter temperatures that aren't usual. I think there, there was, it was like 70 degrees um, Fahrenheit and it was during spring or we were having really, really hot weather in environments that we weren't supposed to have this and then I also have heard that Lake Michigan this is for everyone where it is rising and this is causing um, 
issues with local people who live near the mm -hmm. Lake Michigan. And these are some things that I have noticed and just weird changes in our climate that are unusual and I have not noticed before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, and uh, you, you are pretty young. I'm kind of young. <laughs> but we've, we've even seen these changes happen. And like, I lived in Zion for a bit. And I saw the sidewalk at the beach crumbling. And I saw so I know a lot of the beachfront is eroding throughout Lake Michigan. So like you said, that's going to cause infrastructure issues. There's also been an increase in algal blooms. This heat is contributing to that. And then the heat waves, right? I've heard that that's impacting people. Yeah. And the flooding. I know in uh, there was a huge flood. I forgot how many years ago. And it was really bad in Gurney and Park City. And in Park City, you know, it's very low income. And those people were affected. And I wonder how many of those were able to move, you know? Gurney is a little wealthier. People there were probably had more recourse for fixing it. But I wonder about the people that got mold because of the floods. So it's any, anyone from the audience, do you have notes on um, how climate change has impacted Lake County? Oh, great, yeah. Gloria said we have toxic algal blooms in the summer throughout Lake County. Yep, yep, and the heat, the heat is going to change the life cycles. It's going to make certain organisms that thrive in the heat and the changing weather. It's going to change our species populations, our species interactions, not just our social and environmental interactions. So this is a dilemma that spans from the global to the local. And so like I mentioned, sustainability solutions are being advanced to address the global problem of climate change. However, oftentimes people do not have a shared understanding of sustainability or even a, a beginning understanding of sustainability because it's such a, a buzzword that's being thrown out and everyone's using it in different ways because they never really learned the definition. So we, we wanna discuss that. We wanna discuss that with all of you. And since we're discussing about sustainability, uh, what do you think sustainable sustainability means? Katia? Me. In the ideal world, well, for me, sustainability means employing a systemic thinking that considers all the systems and considers how they're interconnected and works to improve our interconnections. So it's, it's employing a very ecological perspective to the world and to all the sectors. What about you? Um, I think that sustainability means is being able to use Earth's resources without harming the environment oh, and using them. Sorry. In, it's okay. Go in, again. And <laughs> it supports both the community and environment positively. So basically just using the earth's resources without harming the environment and being able to use it to benefit a community and the environment in a positive way that isn't harming the environment. That's what sustainability means to me. I like our definitions. And obviously you and I will have more prepared definitions than others because we created the presentation. Yes. Um, but the long employed definition has been one that came from the UN World Commission on Environment and Development and other such organizations that sustainability is um, a movement that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. So it was very focused on meeting on conserving natural resources for the use of people. And I think it's important to, to think about this definition because it's very extractive. It's still kind of that extractive perspective of how are we going to keep using nature, right? Rather than healing it. It's about our needs. It's not about our ecological relationships, socio-ecological relationships. But nonetheless, um, the movement has worked for interdisciplinary solutions. Um, that improve social, economic, and environmental conditions. 
and it has led to many collaborations, transdisciplinary work. It does recognize how we exist in socio-ecological systems that are intertwined. It recognizes how we need to employ a systemic perspective. Um, this older de definition and employment of the definition. However, there have been new definitions that have started to come out that are more holistic and recognize disparities and how sustainability initiatives have replicated disparities for the environment and for people. Um, because the definition of sustainability, like I mentioned, has been focused on, on just how can we extract better rather than regenerate our relationships. And oftentimes sustainability initiatives have often replicated disparities because they've only been focused on certain groups for the social aspect. Um, and I can think of uh, the carbon market in California that is concentrating pollution in communities of color because companies are able to sell permission to pollute. And the ones that, that are getting all the permissions are the same companies that have been polluting and they're in communities of color. So is that sustainability that these sustainable solutions are um, still harming people today? People today still matter. And it's like something I've asked is who are we making the world sustainable for? You know, if we have these disparities now because of sustainability, we're not making the world sustainable for everyone. We're making it sustainable for the people that already have a lot of resources. So there are new definitions that are more holistic, like the one on the screen, which I really like. It came from the UCLA Sustainability Com Committee and it integrates equity. It recognizes disparities by calling for equity. So the definition is the integration of environmental health, social equity, and economic vitality in order to create thriving, healthy, diverse, and resilient communities for this generation and generations to come. So right here, there's a focus on also improving conditions for people. It's improving the three, the three core aspects of sustainability, social, ecological, economic. And I, I actually like this Venn diagram because usually you only see social, environmental, economic, but this one, this one shows you how we are all part of nature, how all of So like I mentioned, sustainability calls for a systemic approach that recognizes and improves these interconnections, but I have just seen so many sustainability initiatives that don't include the social. So they're really just environmental. Like I've heard of, okay, let's make, let's make it easier to grow food for more people because we're going to have more people. And I've brought up, what about, are you going to pay the farm workers more money? Are you going to ensure good working conditions for them as they're picking food for us in wildfires? Crickets. That's environmental. That's not sustainable. It's not improving sustainability conditions. So true sustainability considers social impacts. It also ensures that the social impacts are not just for the most privileged, like I mentioned. True sustainability includes equity. But what is equity? <laughs> equity is another buzzword that people don't understand. And talking about equity, uh, let's think what does equity mean to you? Uh, to me, equity means a community that is able to thrive in many areas and participate in their community without any injustices. Uh, what does equity mean to you, Katia? Oh. Hmm. The connection was a little bad right there. The connection was a little bad. Can you repeat that? Uh, yes. I said, let's take a moment to think what does equity mean to you? Uh, to me, equity mm -hmm. means a community that is able to thrive in many areas and participate in their community without any injustices. And then I wanted to bring this on to Katia and see what do you think equity means? Hmm. 
I really like your definition. And um, the audience, please let us know if um, you can't, you didn't hear something because I can tell the connection's a little iffy right now. So if you need us to repeat anything, just uh, comment. Um, but yeah, equity to mean means that, you know, we, it's not equality. It's recognizing that people have different backgrounds, different lived experiences, and that we need to work for them. We need to work for all of all people based on their backgrounds and people will need different things to all get to the same level. Um, okay, Gloria says we sound good here. Okay, great. Uh, did Gianna sound good as well? Cause she was choppy for me, but it may just be my connection. So let us know if you need Gianna to repeat her definition. Okay. So equity is focused on reforming historical systems of oppression to achieve community governance, ownership, and equal access to opportunity. So it's addressing the past because like we are fixing what happened in the past. That's equity, but for, so, but for people. And under this framework, a person's identity does not determine Um, conditions where people, regardless of their identity, have access to quality housing, education, jobs, health care, environments where certain people don't bear most of the risk of pollution, of climate change. So sustainability efforts need to integrate equity. Otherwise, they are not sustainable. They are only environmental. And that's something we need to mention because people love saying sustainability. And if we are truly going to achieve a sustainable world, we have to do it right. And something I've, uh, I don't know if I've told you this, Gianna, but something that I strongly believe in is that, you know, sustainability is going to change all aspects of the world. So it can be used as the medium to improve social and environmental conditions because everything has to change. So sustainability will not be achieved without employing a systemic lens. We need to employ a systemic lens that recognizes the systems we live in, that, that sees their interconnections, that sees their variables, that sees feedbacks across time and space. And just, uh, just a note, this is what I'm studying in my graduate education. It's called um, complexity science. And right now complexity science is really being integrated complexity and resilience science into sustainability and not just in the scientific sectors everywhere because we got here because of the disconnect between sectors because we didn't consider our impacts. We didn't consider how everything comes back, how, how we impact others. We often think about how others impact us. So we need to start thinking about how we impact others and the world. So we have to consider the interconnections between the social and environmental spheres, which in reality are not separate. They are one and the same, socio-ecological systems. And before we improve them, we have to recognize and better understand our social and environmental interconnections. We have to think differently about them because for the past, I don't know how many centuries, Western society has prioritized production, producing profit over other interactions with nature. And interactions with nature can be called ecosystem services, where it's like the service. To recognize that we need more interdisciplinary efforts that improve these ecosystem relationships to resolve our global issues. Um, and indigenous people have been leaders in preserving our ecosystem services diverse ecosystem services, not just production. And actually they call ecosystem services, ecosystem relationships, because they recognize the inherent reciprocity because services still sounds extractive. They recognize that it's relationships we have with nature. 
nature is not just providing services to us. We're in a relationship that's reciprocal with them. And so I like this because I think it better captures the systemic lens and where sustainability is headed. So we need to employ a systemic lens and understand and improve our ecosystem relationships for sustainability, for climate change, in order to, to address our global issues. So, and this first step is recognizing that social and environmental condition. Um, talking about social and environmental interconnections, uh, we can think that we are all interconnected with nature. And to see these social and environmental interconnections with nature, we must first note that first note that we are a part of nature, and that the environment and the people both impact each other. If something happens to nature, that will affect us, and we are a part of nature. Thus, that would happen. Thus, that would be a vice versa process. We are interconnected with nature as people form communities around nature. And we can think about this as forming communities in cities and towns near water areas or lakes or oceans. These interconnections can further reach us um, culturally as our environments have shaped cultures and societies and have shaped who we are today. So just thinking about where we come from, where your community is and seeing these interconnections in your daily life it's just you interacting with nature and having these uh, connections with nature and seeing how nature affects you and you affect nature. Was everyone able to hear Gianna? I turned off my uh, video because I wasn't able to hear her clearly. Um, should she go over this again? Uh, please let us know in the comments. Also, we appreciate all the feedback. Oh, so Gloria says, yes, we heard you, Gianna. Okay, that's good. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you're coming in choppy to me, but I'll just turn off my uh, camera so I can hear you. And to further discuss about the social and environmental interconnections, uh, some examples we have here are environmental degradation and pollution, where um, harming the environment, harming the environment is both harming the community and of course your environment as well. For example, we can see that with the human activities that cause climate change, we are harming our environment by having more floods, droughts, um, and rising temperatures, intense storms, and extreme heat. This is both impacting the ecosystems, the animals, and the environment, as well as the communities in these environments, such as it's um, creating food in scarcity. And that will both impact the community and the people that are living in these communities and their way of life. And of course, the poorer communities in the world are going to be more vulnerable to this, and they are going to face these challenges more than other people will. And then we can also see that climate change uh, is, is affecting and will continue to affect the life uh, for our societies. And we can see this, like I mentioned before, with the disadvantaged communities and then the social impacts in this and the extreme weather events that we will be seeing. And basically, the, another example that we have for this would be pollution. Uh, we can take, for, so for pollution, we have humans, of course, in human activities like fossil fuels, polluting nearby communities, which is both um, causing climate change. And like I mentioned before, greenhouse, the greenhouse gas effect, which is then leading to a lot of these uh, unusual events that we are seeing, as well as the communities. They're, they're basically at risk of health issues because of these pollutants and we see these connections of both the environment and the communities and these are some examples of how we are connected with the environment and what we do to, to the environment is going to come back to us and what we and what the environment anything happens to the environment will also come back to us. it's like a vice versa process that is occurring here 
So this is just to keep in mind our connections and what we are doing to the environment. So before we continue, we want to take some time to practice systemic thinking, to reflect on how we are connected to our communities, to our environment, local and global levels. Because we live in a global world now, but we come from all the way in another country. So we have to think about our impacts. We support companies producing in other countries. So Gianna, how are you interacting with and impacting your community? I am interacting and impacting my community, of course, by using the resources from the environment, either locally or from another country. These are all going through systems that are that I'm supporting. Either you're buying these products and you're eating them yourself, and that is also affecting um, different chains and systems in our world. I'm also impacting the environment, like I mentioned, by either using the resources like in your home, electricity, all of that is also releasing these fossil fuels. And this is how we are impacting my, this is how I am impacting my environment, lo environment locally. And then that's going to go to a low, global scale as that's all adding up. And how are you impacting your um, in community? Yeah, I would say similarly, you know, I, um, I think from the interpersonal level, my interactions with people, so I impact my community, the how I, how I uh, volunteer, I can't go, but I tell people about policies. So that's an influence I have. I also like you mentioned, buy products that impact people here and abroad with with my dollars. So now we're going to move on to the environmental. And for this question, we want you to think, how are you and your community interacting and impacting nature locally and globally? And for this one, I would say, how, what do you think, Athea? How are you being impacted by this in your community? You know, interestingly, in the same ways I'm impacting my community. What I buy impacts nature, <laughs> impacts nature and people here and in other places. My, the policies I support and also kind of how I, I uh, use, I think the big part is though how I use resources, like, um, and how I use them and if I use them in a cyclical way. It's better, for instance, when I recycle and use something till it can go back into a cyclical place. But if I'm just throwing something away, I'm creating more waste. So I think for me, I think a lot about like waste and like not buying a lot of stuff and like buying new stuff. And, um, you know, no one's perfect. I mess up sometimes, but, you know, I try. What about you? Um, I would say in similar ways about resources too as like the waste we produce ourselves and then that adds up with our community or how our community is either, are they recycling or are they not recycling, which then goes to a local level, impacts us in a local level, nature and us and in a global level. I would also say some ways you can impact your community or uh, your community locally and globally would also like the supportive policies, as you mentioned, either advocating for them, informing people about them and either to change like the systems that the waste systems or et cetera that your community is doing that will of course lead and impact us in a global level too. I really like this exercise. I can't wait till we do this in person with groups. Um, so in order for us to mitigate many global problems, including climate change, like we, we've explained in the whole presentation, we have to advance sustainability. And what that means is employing systemic thinking that considers how all the sectors are interconnected, feed into each other. We, had a, we have to heal our connections and we have to connect, first of all. Well, the connections are already there. We have to just 
realize that we're connected and we have to improve. We have to improve them. And sustainability requires equity. Let's not forget that. If you are not working equitably, you're not doing sustainable work. You're doing environmental work for only certain groups of people. So we wanna close our session by moving on to how can sustainability work at the local level? So just so you know, this was part one of our presentation. We're gonna have a part two where we go more in depth into that. But right now we're going to give you a brief summary of what you can start doing to heal your social and environmental relationship. Um, so this is a brief view as mentioned before, what we can do and what actions you can take. Um, some actions you can do are um, getting involved in a local community organization that focuses on types of environmental work you want to do. Uh, you can just do research, see if there's there's probably a range of different organizations that you can get involved in seeing like what are their goals, what do they want to do and see which one you feel associates with you the most and the work you want to do in your community and the effect you want to have. Uh, you can volunteer. Uh, in these organizations or in local community groups, join protest or donate to causes that you care about that will, let's say that they will help our environment. You can support environment pol environmental policies and programs uh, by lobbying for them or writing to your politicians, either locally or globally, advocating for environmental changes in your own community and doing more work related to this. You can also find ways um, your purchases, such as from supporting companies, is you, you can also just find ways to purchase things from companies that are following sustainable practices already, and this will help the, this will help support them and this is support the work that they are doing, as well as finding ways for your businesses to be more sustainable if you have any, such as getting solar panels for your business, and this can also relate to your homes getting um, solar panels to reduce the amount of energy you use, fossil fuels, such as the greenhouse gas effect mentioned before, or recycling or composting. And if you're a student, you can join environmental groups at your school or start your own or the organizations, local organizations, and you're never too young to join them. And this is some things that you can do. And for the next slide, it will just be like actions you can take as well uh, in a more simpler way. And so some of these simple things that you can do if you don't have a lot of time on your hands to do the other things as before, you can make simple changes in your life or in your home style. And then you can also tell your friends about this and they can do that. You can just either by voting, simply voting, you can vote for leaders who support environmental policies and environmental changes in your community. This will be really effective because they will be able to talk with these other organizations and get things done in your community. You can support, like mentioned before, local businesses that support the environment, follow some sustainability tips that we'll mention in our next presentation, or you can also just switch your home either to get LED lights, buying thrift clothes, and just eating less meat as that produces, as that wastes a lot of water. And just following basic tips, uh, I mean, simple sustainability practices in your life will also have an effect. Yeah, and so Gianna mentioned get involved. So you can get involved with us. You can uh, help us raise awareness about climate change and sustainability by being an ambassador to now. So you can give this presentation to different groups get them thinking about sustainability and our interconnections. You can be a mentor or a mentee for um, getting youth involved in environmental work, sustainability work in our communities. And you can help, you can get a tree for your community and we'll help you plant it. Or you can help us organize and plant trees in communities. Uh, you can help us develop curriculum, facilitate education curriculum to get everyone connected more to nature, especially underserved communities. And we also have a lot of just direct opportunities to heal nature, to, to plant native plants, to plant pollinator gardens. And uh, we have a lot of events, we collaborate with partners. Um, but so yeah, just reach out, you know, you can find us on Facebook, our website, and we, really like 
working with everyone, we are committed to community-driven sustainability. So we want anyone to have a voice. You don't need a degree in the environment. Everyone is an expert in terms of their relationship with nature and their communities, which is what sustainability is about. And we need to shape a future where And I think my computer just froze right now. That's okay. I did not hear what you said, sorry. It's okay. Do you have any last words before we close our session? Um, I just wanted to say thank you everyone for being here today and listening to us. And yeah, just either follow like some of the attempts I mentioned before or feel free to share any of this information with people, your family, your friends, and it just helps spread the word in order to just see global warming and climate change as an issue we're facing and seeing what we can do collectively to help with this. Thank you. Yeah, and thank you. Yeah. Also, my computer froze again. Did you say something at the end? Because I saw a frozen screen. Oops, I Oops, we're still connected. Still connected, Wait, okay. I'm going to...